I had heard that people told me that that senators are a little bit like middle school and signed their names in their desk drawers. And like, like the closet. Like the Thurber <laughs> closet where, from where we're broadcasting this. And and so um, I started pulling out desk drawers and I saw um, Hugo Black of Alabama, a name I knew. Saw a lot of names I didn't know. Saw um, uh, George McGovern, Al Gore, Albert Gore Sr. And then it just said Kennedy, one word. And so I, Ted, Ted was about four seats away. I said, Ted, come here a second, Ted Kennedy. And he walked over, I said, which brother's desk is this? And he said, well, it's, it's gotta be Bobby's, I have Jack's. Oh. So he gets first choice, I guess, since he was a Kennedy, but. Uh, this is not the worst time in our country's history. I mean, I, I personally think Trump is the worst president in my lifetime. Um, for a lot of in a lot of ways, but it's not the worst time. It's not McCarthyism. Um, I spoke to a group of a hundred ministers in Cleveland, Cliff, all faiths, Jew, I mean, rabbis, priests, ministers, uh, imams. It was a cross. It was a good cross section of religious people, leaders, and um, we were talking about this. And if it were the McCarthy days, it was talking. We were talking about immigration, and they were challenging some things the government was doing. And I'm not sure they could have done that in McCarthy's era. So it's not the worst time for our country. It's not McCarthy. It's not World War II. It's not the Depression. It's not slavery. I mean, it's certainly not any of that. So, um, but but there are challenges, and I I do worry about. I mean, we have a president that that calls people in your profession enemies of the people. Um, that's a very McCarthy kind of tactic. There, there was a political party in, in, that we all studied in school and didn't quite know what they were in the 1830s and 40s called the Know Nothings. Yeah. And they were they, they were called that for, for I think a couple of reasons. One is they would they were sort of secret at first and. If, if you were one and if you belonged to that party and somebody asked you, you'd say, I, I know nothing. But the other thing is they, they were an anti-immigrant party and the immigrants they particularly disliked. They were, they said they spoke a funny language and had a weird religion. They were German Catholics in the 1830s and 40s. We were a Protestant, white except for our slaves, um, white except for Southern slaves. We were a white country that, so a white European, Northern, Western European country. and. Um, so there's always been a strain of the American public that is anti-immigrant that, that plays to that. And they'll, they'll always be there. The question is they shouldn't have the power they do today. There's a, there's a, the, the most heinous, probably awful member of the Senate ever, or certainly that we know of, a guy named Bilbo from Mississippi, a, a Southern a Democrat a, of the segregationist Democratic Party virulently racist. I mean, he took, made no bones about what he thought about people of color. And um, he was reelected in 1946, and but not particularly honest circumstances. And this third year senator named Glenn Taylor that people barely knew, the country certainly didn't know, stood up from Idaho, where there are where no black people and almost no labor unions, stood up and took him on. And, and with the assistance of Robert Taft from Ohio, the Republican leader, he was not seated. He died eight months later. And there's a scene, in, as recounted by a St. Louis reporter, was the first winner of the, of the Pulitzer for column writing. A guy named Marquis Childs describes this scene of, of how he spoke and how people reacted and how much courage. Glenn Taylor had courage. I mean, he, only, he lost six elections and won one. And he always was willing to lose. Mm -hmm.